Issei is a sommelier. He is the best, well, second best. A young girl, Camille, is led to a shed by her father. Blindfolded, her father conducts her through various smell and taste tests. He gets pissed off when she can't figure one out. She goes through a mental recollection of eating grass and bugs and gets it right. Adult Camille is at a bar in Paris. She takes a phone call from her dad. He's fallen ill and he wants her to visit him in Tokyo. Tonight, this is serious. Camille is hesitant. She tells him she'll think about it. Back into the bar, a young dude buys Camille drinks. Camille does not drink alcohol. I mean it. Camille does not drink alcohol. H2O only. This guy tries to shotgun alcohol into her mouth with a kiss. Big mistake. I said Camille does not drink alcohol. She gets a nosebleed and then proceeds to pass out. Issei wakes at a bar. He's been set up on a date with Honoka. She turns out to be a little too shallow for him. He's out. Issei is a serious dude. No time for city girls or boss bitches. Days later, he cooks dinner for his parents. His pops is very supportive of his ventures. However, his mother ain't having it. Boy, get a real job. Issei tells them that his mentor, Alex, has died. By the way, Alex is Camille's father. Against her mom's objections, Camille decides to go see her ailing father. She hops on a plane, a private plane. Yes, Camille's dad has money like that. See, he's one of the world's top wine critics. When she arrives in Tokyo, she is greeted by family friend Luca. He tells her that, unfortunately, her father has passed away while she was en route. They go to Luca's restaurant. Camille discusses her lack of relationship with her father. Luca offers Camille a prestige wine and is surprised when she tells him that she does not drink alcohol. Anyway, Luca tells her that the funeral is tomorrow and also her father's inheritance is being settled tomorrow too. Things move fast in Tokyo. Camille settles into her dad's home. She checks out his office, his photos, his collection of books that he authored, family photos. She notices on his desk, a book that she wrote. Perhaps he was a proud papa after all. The next day, we're at the inheritance settlement meeting. Camille gets there and old boy Issei is also there. Issei was her father's favorite protege. Camille doesn't know him from Adam. The executor of the will tells them that Alex was rich, like rich, rich. He owns the most valuable personal wine collection in the world, valued at $175 million. Alex's wish was for Camille and Issei to compete for his inheritance. Winner take all. They will compete in a contest to identify wines that he has selected. They both will sample the same wine and then one month later, resample it again and identify it. Whichever one gives the most accurate description wins the first stage of the contest. Camille thinks this is ridiculous. She's not going to do it. But given that the only other option is to hand over the inheritance, she agrees. Issei is ready to go. Let's get this money. He goes through his routine, samples it, and looks very confident. All right, water drinking Camille, you're up. Camille tries to pull herself together to drink the sample. The alcohol explodes in her system. She crushes the glass in her hand, and now here comes the nosebleed. Bloody hand, bloody nose, she runs out. Downstairs, she tells Luca that the inheritance thing was some bullshit. Alex's inheritance is getting a lot of news coverage. Now to the funeral. In the car ride over, Luca tells Camille that her father has left her a message. She ain't trying to hear it. They go through the routines of the funeral, and now there's another thing. She has to perform the ceremonial part. She must pick up his bones with chopsticks and drop them into a bowl. I admire Camille's toughness. This was a lot for one year, much less one day. There's one last thing Luca has to show Camille before she leaves the next day. It's her father's wine cellar, his most sacred space. In his wine collection, Camille finds an unopened bottle 
that he wanted to share with her on her 18th birthday. Tears. Camille decides to watch the video that her dad left behind. She has flashbacks of the good times that they spent together. In the video, her dad admits his shortcomings. He asks her to stay in Tokyo and compete for the inheritance. He wants her to realize and accept her talents. More tears. End of episode. The episode starts with Lil Camille drinking wine. Nose bleeds, passing out. Her mom yelling at her pops, blaming him for it. Back to the present. Luca has sent Camille to meet Philippe, a friend of her dad's. Philippe can teach Camille everything she needs to know about wine. However, he doesn't have the time to teach her. He's got a damn business to run. He passes her off to his son, Tomas. Camille is looking at Tomas like one big old snack. He shows her around the vineyard. She tells Philippe and Tomas about her problems drinking alcohol. Tomas and his dad realize that tutoring Camille to win this contest has gone from difficult to impossible. Camille's mom has arrived. I skipped over some of the previous scenes, but let's just say that Camille's mom is a piece of work. She hates Camille's father. Philippe has agreed to help Camille on the condition that she takes a brain scan. He wants to get to the bottom of why she has trouble drinking alcohol. The doctor tells Camille that her reactions to alcohol are linked to a past trauma. The doctor recommends that she continues to avoid alcohol because it could be dangerous for her health. Camille gets into an argument with Philippe about him defending her dad and his absence from her life. Philippe tells Camille that she carries some responsibility since she shut her dad out. He brings up the email that she wrote to her dad on her 18th birthday. Camille does not know anything about an email. Philippe shows her the email. Camille did not write it. It's some shit that her mom did on her behalf. Camille calls out her mom on this and then sends her packing. Camille is going to try to master wines in a different way. Her plan is to detect wine through smell. We are back to the blindfold. Camille remembers the teachings of her father and it actually works. Issei applies for a wine consultant gig. I believe this is the scene from the first episode. Issei tells the employers, if there's a test, give me the test. He smashes the test. We get more of the dynamic between Issei's mom and dad. His dad works for his mom, and his mom is the boss's daughter. The boss, Issei's granddad, summons the mother into the office. He tells her it's a bad look for the family for his grandson, Issei, to be publicly chasing after Alex's fortune. Meet Juliet, Tomas's old lady. She brought some wine samples without alcohol to assist Camille. Juliet peeps Camille's interest in her man, Tomas. What follows is a master class of giving the stank eye. Enjoy. Philippe takes Camille for a spin. He has her walk through his vineyard. Camille is out here eating dirt again. She recognizes fern was one of the ingredients in the wine that she tasted in Tokyo. Issei did not get the gig. His grandfather walks into his startup office. Grandpapa shows him the story about him vying for Alex's inheritance. He wants Issei to make a public announcement that he's pulling out of the competition. On his way out, Grandpapa knocks down all of Issei's vineyard soil samples. That is fucked up, man. Unnecessary pimp behavior. Philippe tests Camille. She fails. She sniffs Philippe's wine and it takes her back to the wine tasting with her dad. She has a deeper recollection of the incident where she passed out as a kid. Turns out, her father wasn't letting her drink wine. He was feeding her drops, which he would then spit out. That night, her mom pulled her dad out of the room. Camille took the opportunity to drink some of the wine. She took it straight to the head like a real pro. She now realizes that it wasn't her father's fault that she drank the wine and passed out. With this new revelation, she downs Philippe's wine before they can stop her. This time, 
No nosebleeds. She's a drinker now. Yay. End of episode. Camille is now drinking wine, and it has her hallucinating, but the good kind of hallucination. Philippe and Thomas cannot figure out the wine that she had in Tokyo. Based on the ingredients, they find the closest thing. They believe it may be a wine called Linage. This wine is no longer manufactured, and there aren't many bottles left to be found. Since they cannot locate a bottle, they decide to take a road trip to the man who made it. Along the way, Tomas asks Camille if she's single. She gives him an answer that would throw up a bunch of red flags to anyone. They arrive at the vineyard of the man who made the Lanage wine. Unfortunately, he has no more bottles for them to sample. Wasted road trip, but at least they got to know each other better. It's time for Camille to return to Tokyo for the inheritance test. Issei packs up what little shit his grandfather did not destroy in his office. Issei's company was called Drops of God. Issei goes to meet with a reporter, Yukira. He gives her the news that he's withdrawing from the contest to join his family's diamond business. The reporter claims that he is afraid. He's a damn chicken. She says he's not being honest with himself and that he should rethink about pulling out of the competition. Camille is back in Tokyo with Luca. Luca has a bottle of the Lanage wine, but it's a different vintage. Plus, it's 12,000 K euros. Luca ain't trying to open a bottle like that for just shit and giggles. However, there's a high roller visiting the restaurant tonight. Their plan is to sell that bottle to the high roller and have Camille sneak a taste. Mayobi and Luca's nephew Lorenzo teach Camille how to serve the wine. That night, she proceeds to serve the wine to the fat cat and gets a whiff. But that wasn't enough. She needs to drink it. This dude drunk all the wine except for a few drops. However, Camille was able to sample a few drops. It's not the wine. She calls Tomas and tells him that it's not the Lanage. Back to the drawing board. Before she hangs up, she tells him that she misses him. Grandpapa does not see any damn stories about Issei dropping out of the competition. He tells his daughter to fix that shit. Then he tells her to try to be nice to Issei for once. This cracked me up because the last scene with this dude, he was knocking over Issei's shit in his office. Anyway, the mother goes to see her husband. She asks him to speak to Issei. The husband replies that perhaps wine is Issei's path. She says, fuck all that. Make him change his mind. Tomas shows up in Tokyo. I guess that little I miss you line that Camille dropped got him on the hunt now. Luca gives him access to his entire cellar. Tomas gives Camille a lesson on aging and maybe that's why her predictions were off. Issei and his dad are hanging out. Issei tells him that wine is his path. If he gives up on that, he'll be unhappy all his life, just like his dad and his mom. His dad says he thinks he should drop out of the competition. Issei says, I know that mom sent you and you're a damn coward. That's some cold shit, Issei. Issei arrives at Alex's home for the test. He observes the photo of Alex and his students. Camille arrives and eyes the mystery wine. It's time for the showdown. Issei samples the wine and he is quick with his answer. Complete confidence. Money in the bank. He's been on Amazon Prime adding shit to his wish list. Camille looks at him like, I know this motherfucker ain't already finished. Now it's Camille's turn. She goes into a trance. She comes out of it with a big smile. She knows the wine. She takes a second swig. She knows the year, 1999. She goes into another semi-trance, comes out of it, and changes the year from 1999 to 2000. I think she's just guessing now. Issei is right, Camille is wrong. Issei wins stage one. He offers a handshake to Camille. Driving home, Issei views the photo of Alex and his students. Alex would have been proud of him today. Issei's dad gets stood up by his wife for their anniversary dinner. He calls her and she's still going on about the contest. She calls him useless. 
and says that she wishes she had never met him. Talk about kicking a dude square in the nuts. Issei's dad goes to the hotel desk. He asks the worker for an envelope. He takes off his watch, his ring, and then writes a note and puts them into the envelope. He hands it to the worker, and I'm thinking the same thing that the worker is thinking. I hope this dude ain't about to do what I think he's about to do. The dad walks out of the restaurant, and then, end of episode. My expectations were low, not because I thought it would be poorly made, just because it's not usually what I run towards when picking a show, but I really, really liked it. It's a good story. Sort of reminds me of Netflix Queen's Gambit. That's a show I didn't expect to like, but I got pulled in by it. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm rooting for Issei or Camille in this. Quality stuff, I'm in.